guys, I'm always telling you that you can draw right now with literally whatever you have on hand. So why not put my words into action? So I am going to be doing three projects with these. And in these projects, they'll be into three different videos. So this is the first video. And with each project, I will be using a different set of trans. And I am going to be using these canvas panels from the dollar store. All of this was from the dollar store. So it's super duper affordable, even if you don't have these supplies. And I'm just gonna open this up real quick. And in here you can see we have three canvases and they all come together in one package but this middle one is also wrapped separately just for added protection I guess so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this one too and just like that we have three perfectly good canvases to start drawing on so let's get right into the first drawing of the series So for this first one, we're going to be using the 16 set of Crayola crayons and we're going to be drawing just a very simple candle. So let's dive. So let's dive right in to the actual drawing. So as I said, supplies you're going to need is a simple pack of Crayola crayons. This one is a 16 set but you never know, you can probably use less or more, whichever you like. And then a canvas panel. Now, uh, you can probably do this with a sketchbook or, well, any sort of paper probably. This is just what I'm using. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really simple pencil. This is just a mechanical pencil and I'm just gonna sketch out a loose kind of idea of what I want to draw. So first of all, we're gonna do it in horizontal. So I'm just gonna kind of make a basic idea of where I want the candle. Kind of following the rule of thirds a little bit. If we were going to kind of visualize it a little bit better, there'd be like a line here and here, and probably one there and there. So in general, I kind of want my candle to fall along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of figure out where I want the actual candle to be and then like the actual flame of the candle because I always like lit candles. So just going to kind of along this line, we figured out this is about the height I want my candle, the actual like wax, and this is the wick. So then what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna make a kind of a rectangle going down. It's okay if your lines are perfectly straight, that's perfectly fine. Now for me, I like it when the candles kind of look like they're uh, dripping a little bit so I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of a wavy line um, it's essentially a diagonal line from where the wick intersects with the bottom of the candle to like the side here so this just kind of makes it look a little bit more natural in my opinion and then I'm gonna bring it up a little bit above this corner and over basically just connecting the whole candle like so and you can already see it's kind of starting to take a little bit more shape. So I'm just gonna like redefine the edges of the candle a little bit better and mark out where I want my wick to be. I'm just gonna kind of do a rectangle on top of where I did the line before and I'm gonna do kind of a angled rectangle on top of that because more often than not, the wick will have a little bit of a curve to it. Then we're just gonna do a basic teardrop shape around that wick. Kind of want it to taper off at the top. So this is gonna be the general idea of the candle itself. This is what I'm gonna start with and then I might go through and figure out kind of a background too. I'm going to open up my pack of Crayolas. Fun. Okay, we got our Crayolas. So what color do we want our candle? I guess what we'll do is we'll actually start with the flame because it's the most kind of generic. We all kind of know what colors a flame should be. So I'm just gonna fill in most of this. We're not gonna fill in the wick. We're just gonna fill in the flame around the wick.
You can see the crayon is kind of getting muddied up by the graphite underneath. That is pretty normal. And normally I would lighten up my sketch. However, for this, since I'm kind of just experimenting with you guys, we're just leaving it in. And also I want to make sure you guys can see so you can draw it yourself. Now I'm just going to go in with this orange color. I actually think I was given two of these. Well, there's a yellow orange and an orange. Guys, do these look much different at all to you? Like I know I'm an artist and I should tell the difference between color, but this is just super subtle to be called two completely different colors. So yeah, fun. If you're using this set, you can really use either one of these. They will both do the trick. I'm just gonna use the yellow orange and I'm just gonna go along the edge of this flame. Basically outlining it. Then I'm gonna go through with a little bit of red on the outside of that. And kind of see it's already taking shape. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how much I can refine this. So I'm gonna take my white and go on top of yellow first, and then I'm gonna go into orange and into the red. You can see that kind of blended it out. Now we're gonna go through with the exact same colors just to refine it a little bit and add a little bit more of that saturation back into it. We're using that yellow crayon all over the base again, just going back in with that orange. So just going along the outside of that and then taking my red on the outside of that. Just going in with this brown for the whole wick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black and just add a little bit of a shadow to one edge of it. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to add a little bit of purple right next to that black. You don't have to do that. I just was curious how that would end up looking. And this is what our drawing looks like so far. You can see super simple and pretty straightforward. Now, I had said before we're going to leave the sketch outline in, but for this, I'm actually going to get rid of this middle guideline. So you really don't need that anymore erase that. I guess I'll just do like a brown and then bring in other colors on top as like a reflective color. So for this I'm just going to take my crayon and fill in the entire candle base. And for the area right next to the wick, we had marked this off earlier a little bit to add a little bit more depth to it. For this, we're gonna go through with a little bit of black to darken that up because essentially that area is going to be in a little bit of a shadow. Then I'm gonna take that same black and go along the edges just to give it a little bit more contrast. And I will go through with some yellow, maybe, on top of the brown. Just bring in a little bit of orange down here. And I am going to bring in a tiny bit of purple. So basically, we did a base of brown, added black to the outside to add a little bit of shadow to there. We went through in the middle with yellow. On the outside of that, we did orange, and then just a touch of purple on the outside of that. You can see it looks very grainy right now. So now I'm gonna, just gonna take our white, and we're gonna blend it out. I'm getting all sorts of crumbs. Don't expect it to look all smooth and pretty when you first blend it out. It's crayon. It's not gonna look pretty for a while. And this is what we have so far. You can still see it's still quite grainy, but certainly not as bad as before we blended. So we're just gonna repeat what we did before, adding we did add brown before, but I'm just gonna go through with yellow. 
and then our orange on the outside of that. And then I'll use brown instead of black for these shadows. And then we're going to use just a touch of purple. We just do the same thing, blending it out. so far. Now I'm just going to add a tiny bit of shadow in some of these areas to make it look like wax is melting a little bit. And we're going to go back on top of that with some white above the shadow area. Like so, and the candle is pretty much done. So now we're gonna figure out the background. And for this, what I'm actually going to do will be interesting because we have so many other colors in here. So I'm thinking about doing like green, teal, and purple. So like that maybe, that would look interesting I think. So let's just try it. I'm actually thinking about doing like a bokeh background if I can. I'm just gonna do some circles, like so. Going with the blue. is to have it overlap. Can't stress that enough. If you just do circles, you're gonna end up with polka dots. We don't want polka dots. We want an out of focus background. Right now it doesn't look super out of focus because this is just our first layer, but it will get there. So just continuing to layer up the pigment. going to take the black in between these colors. It's already starting to look pretty cool. All right, there's our first layer of black, and you can see it still looks quite grainy and gritty, just like our candle did. Now you can see our candle looks really nice and blended, just because it's next to something that's really, really not blended. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep layering this up Basically, repeating what we just did, adding green to the circles, then blue, then our pink, and then going in between with our black. So I'm gonna give you a moment so that you can do that, and I will get right back with you when I'm also done, because 
this might take a while. So you can see I added another layer of green to those bubbles. And now I'm gonna move on to the blue. Now because we are using pressure to blend, feel free to take breaks because this could potentially cause pain to your wrist. Now I'm done with the blue circles and I will be moving on to the pink. You can see now I finished the pink and we'll be moving on to the black. And my crayon broke because I was pressing so hard to get some decent pigment out of it. But we can still use it. It happens. Now you'll notice that as you go along that the pigment will tend to stick less and less. This is because it only sticks if there's enough texture on the paper for it to actually grip to. And as you're adding layers of pigment, you're filling in that texture, making it so that the lower sections are getting higher and eventually evening out with the higher sections. All right, we finished adding the black and it looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna go through and kind of try to add some more transitions in here, just overlapping the colors. So the green is done. Now I'm just gonna go through and do the same with the blue and the purple. You'll notice that the more layering you do, the smoother and smoother the drawing will be. You can see it is coming along getting nicer and nicer as we go. I'm so excited. It's turning out absolutely wonderful. Now, if your drawing still kind of looks grainy, then the chances are you haven't added enough layers to fill in all of the white little nooks of the paper, making the planes nice and level. So just keep adding more and more layers of crayon until it looks as smooth as you want. And there you have it guys, a pretty decent drawing done with only crayons. And I think if you really wanted to make it look even more smooth, you could probably use odorless mineral spirits or solvent on a brush to do that. If you guys would like to know more about how to use solvents, then feel free to check out this video. Anyways, thank you for watching and until next time, God bless.